Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Is there a diabolical plot to remove major sections from the Bible that we don't even talk about today, which will cost us the power of God, and in some cases, even our very salvation? My guest says yes. Bert Farias, after graduating Bible college, you had an amazing dream with an amazing effect. Tell me about it. Yeah, it was actually the night of my ordination service. I had just been ordained for ministry and I was trying to get to bed and I kept hearing words up on the inside of me, rolling around on the inside of me. I'd get up, turn on the light, write, go to bed. This happened several times. It's like that voice wouldn't shut off and it was this long prophecy about I call it the flame of fire prophecy. And it was really uh, part of my calling and part of the anointing that God's put on my life with, with, with that uh, fire. Then I fell asleep and then I had a dream about the fire. I was in a large, uh, a wide open grassy, dry grassy field. And I, I remember I was on my knees in the middle of this field just praying. And there were these young men all around me lighting these quick fires all over this grassy field. And I was down on my knees and I could feel the heat of the fire coming up closer and closer to me until I couldn't take the heat anymore. And I got up and just ran in the house. And I knew that I was giving birth to some kind of ministry um, that I would be involved in at that time. But what you have found is that you are a fire starter. I believe that's what God was showing you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, when I was dreaming, I don't know if I was half awake or dreaming, but I heard that roar of a blazing forest fire on the inside of me. And it was, I mean, it was furious. So much that when people found out about it, they, instead of calling me Bert Farious, they started calling me Bert Furious because that flame was a furious fire. Yeah, you know, as far as I'm concerned, normal is not necessarily what you see with your eyes. Normal is normal according to the Bible. That is normal. Exactly. Tell me some normal things because uh, you're like a historian of revivals and moves of God's spirit. Uh, tell me, uh, and you know, th this has got me so excited. This divine radiation soul. <laughs> you know, I'm a glutton for his glory. I'll, I'll, I'm a I'll glutton admit. for the divine radiation zone. When you find out, you'll be a glutton for it too. Yes, you will. <laughs> Well, in studying the revivals of old, the power of God. I mean, we have so many church conferences today and so many conventions, but where is the power of God? I mean, when you read about history, the power of this divine radiation zone, when ships would come into the New England Harbor and crew members would be coming under conviction without anybody preaching to them. They came into this, they call it divine radiation zone, where they came into this zone and crew members came under conviction and they began to repent of their sins and call out on God because they had, they were hit with such a God consciousness of their sin and their condition before God. I read stories about George Whitfield when he came to Boston. You got to be tough to preach in Boston. I'm telling you, <laughs> you got to be really saved to even live there. And he would draw a crowd of 10, 20,000 people that would come. And these young boys would climb up on trees, you know, back before the day of where they had amplification and sound right. systems. And he would tell these young men, boys, now you need to come down off of that tree because when I start preaching, the power of God's going to come and it's going to hit you and you're going to fall off that tree and you're going to, and you're going to injure yourself. So he would have all these young, young men get off, down off the trees. And sure enough, when he'd start preaching, 
preaching, in the middle of his preaching, people would just be slain in the spirit, nobody touching them, all over the grounds where he was preaching. Did anyone catch him so they wouldn't no, hurt themselves? No, there was no catchers. <laughs> <laughs> you either fall in the flesh or fall in the spirit. <laughs> now, you are normal, as far as I'm concerned. Normal is defined by the Bible. You see the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame, the lame walk. But uh, this is kind of off the charts. Uh, tell me about Thomas Amaro. <laughs> Well, that was amazing. That's the greatest miracle I think I've ever seen. Thomas was taken over by demons when he was a little boy. He's, he, he lived in Africa. And, uh, you know, in Africa, these things are common. You know, there's witchcraft, there's voodoo. Right. And he, in his own words, because I interviewed him, he said evil spirits came and visited him when he was just a little boy. And they enticed him and began to show him these wonderful things and kept taking him deeper and deeper into a, almost a relationship with these evil spirits where really he, he, he entered into a covenant with the devil. And as, as, he, as he came into this covenant, the devil kept demanding more and more things of his life, which is what the devil does. He gives right. you pleasure and then pain a little more. More pleasure, a little more pain. But the one night I was there, I was in Gambia, West Africa, and I was preaching the gospel. And this young man, who's now 19 at this time, he had been kicked out of his house because the people were afraid of him. Because wherever he stayed, there would be these this weird, weird activity, so much so that there would be blood. People would see blood on his back. He had scars on his back because he was beaten. He was being beaten by evil spirits for disobeying him. So he was out this night, very tormented trying to get out of this covenant that he'd entered in with the devil. And he was outside of the venue where we were preaching, out on the streets, and he froze to the ground. He couldn't move as I was preaching. I remember in the meeting, there was great joy and liberty that was breaking out in the meeting during that time. And he said he came to a place where he felt this power he'd never felt before. And he didn't know it was a stronger demonic satanic power that was going to take him over for good and he'd never be able to get back out of it. Or if it was a higher power than Satan, maybe God's power that had come to deliver him. And sure enough, it was God's power because the young men that were ushering in the meeting, they went out and noticed him and he said, don't touch me. I can't move. And they tried to push him and he couldn't move. I mean, if you just stood as hard as you could and you asked somebody to push you, you could not help from push him. They couldn't push him. Finally, over a process of a few minutes, they finally got him loose. They brought him into the meeting. We ministered to him. They, they actually laid him down on the pulpit. We cast the devil out of him and ministered the new birth to him. And then the next day, the Holy Ghost, and he came out of that. We registered to him in our, in our Bible school, and Thomas Amari is totally free today. Yeah. Now, that is normal, normal, and it's defined by the Bible. But there are major themes missing in the presentation of the American gospel. They're in the Bible, but they're missing, intentionally, diabolically missing. And it can cost you moving in that kind of normalcy, normal as defined by the Bible. We're going to talk about it when we come back. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. Do yeah, you remember the, the old story about the emperor's new clothes? Do you remember that? Well, Bert, your wife had a dream, which is kind of on that order. Tell me about it. Yeah, it was very significant at the time she had it and still is today. In this dream, she was on this church property and the pastor was giving her a tour. Of the, they were having like a picnic-like fellowship on the grounds and the, and the pastor was showing her around. And then they went into this large kitchen. He actually called it a cookhouse where they were preparing this food. And my wife knew what the food was because she had had some of this food, these rice dishes and these things that she had in Africa. And she told the pastor, she looked up at all, these food, all this food that was being stored on all these shelves. And she said, how come you're not serving this food to the people? And he said, it's strange food. They're not used to it. 
And so after that, he took her back out on the church grounds and there was all these weeds and tears that were growing up all over the property. They were crossing over on this little stick bridge, this little garden bridge, and she noticed these weeds and tears were coming up under through the, through the wood and it was hard to even cross that bridge. And then all over the grounds, it was getting harder for people to walk. They're getting entangled in all these weeds and all these tears. And, and then my wife was very distressed after the dream and asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said, these weeds and these tears represent festering sin, complacency and compromise that has gotten into the body of Christ because of certain truths and themes that are not being preached. Well, here's what I don't get. We have more Bibles in the United States of America per square Christian than any country that ever lived. Now we have the internet and you can get free copies of almost every version of the Bible right, right on your own internet. How can we be missing these major themes? In the West, we separate knowledge from application. The Bible is an Eastern book. And in the, in, 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 in the, in the East, you know, because you're, you're a Jew, they did not separate application and knowledge. You did not know something until you applied it. But here, we, the, our supreme authority has not been the Word of God. Jesus has not been our, the supreme authority in our lives. And people are, you know, Paul prophesied. He spoke of it in the last days. And people are not going to endure sound doctrine. They're not going to have ears to hear the truth. They, they're going to heap to themselves teachers because they're going to have itching ears. Paul said, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing uh, spirits and doctrines of devils. We're living in that time. We're living in the last of the last days. And I've seen a major departure from biblical truths. I mean, I'm not talking about minor truths. I'm talking about major truths, major themes in the Bible. God told you actually spoke to you that there is a diabolical plan so that major areas of the Bible are just not talked about today. Yeah, he said there's been a diabolical silence on holiness. Well, and, and because people have just misunderstood. What is holiness? Holiness, to me, the essence of it, what, what happened with Adam and Eve? When they first fell, the first thing they tried to do was what? Hide. To me, holiness does not hide. The essence of holiness is transparency. It's an unveiled face. It's when you're open and honest before God. And then out of that will come a lifestyle of, 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 of holy living. It's not what you wear, how you dress, the outward blessings that you have. Holiness is the nature. It's the character of God. It's the outshining of God in a person. And it's beautiful. Uh, you've researched the nuggets that people of old that had normal according to the Bible, ministries, like a Smith Wigglesworth. Give me a nugget from him. Well, there's many of them. Wigglesworth said, if anything in this world fascinates you more than God, then you don't have what God wants you to have. He said, anything that cools your affection for God is worldliness. So how does someone that is a mixture, we're humans, there's degrees of mixture in every human, that's going to a seeker-sensitive, lukewarm church, or one where there's no power, how do they have a fire on themselves and a fire in their home? Well, we know today that God doesn't dwell in a temple made with human hands. He dwells in each one of us. If a person is born again, especially if they're also filled with the Spirit, they are the temple of God. God lives within them. And it's being aware, developing a consciousness and awareness of God's presence 24-7 that you really learn to experience the presence of God. And there's, there's an infilling that's not just a one-time infilling. We call the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But it is a stream that should never run dry. We should should be being filled continually. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled or be drunk with the Spirit. Talk about Smith Wigglesworth. He came to a place at the end of his life where he said he could get drunk anytime he wanted to on the Spirit of God. And when he was around sinners and people that were not informed or, or, or were ignorant of these things, he could just sober up like that. I'll tell you, what a way to live that a man got to that point where he could tap into the Spirit. He could get drunk anytime he wanted to. Okay. How can we have it in our home, what he had? It comes through praying in the Holy Ghost. It comes through 
Spending time in the Word of God. What was it? Those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, remember after the resurrection in Luke 24? What caused their hearts to burn? It said, did not our hearts burn when He spoke the Word of God to us, the Scripture to us, by the way? In other words, it was a revelation of the Word that caused their hearts to burn. Well, we know that, that the Word of God is in all, is in all God is an all-consuming fire, but the Word is a fire. So, you know, these spiritual exercises, being filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, meditating on the word of God, just spending time with Jesus. We need to give ourselves to inspired utterances, not just in tongues, but we need to be speaking and singing to ourselves. The Bible says psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's almost a lost art in the church today. We don't do it. So many themes are lost. I, I, you have to tell me uh, <laughs> about <laughs> Father Nash. Most people I never like know excitement. that name. <laughs> never know that name. Father Nash was the prayer partner of Charles Finney. He went before, wherever Charles Finney was sent to preach, he would go like a week or two before him, sometimes gather one or two other praying, very skillful, prayerful people, and they would in, enter into deep intercession together. I'm talking about groanings and travail and giving birth to what God wanted to do in those meetings. And how they knew it was time to bring Finney, to summon Finney, they would look out the window when, when in the time when men Many people were outside on the sidewalks on the street and when men started bowing down and kneeling on the ground in conviction they knew it was time to bring Finney. You know he had the easy job as a matter of fact you told me that when Father Nash died what happened to Finney? Oh he stopped he, he, he quit the ministry. He knew the power engine in his ministry the power behind his ministry was Father Nash's prayers. Okay I want to find out what he believes, being a student of revivals and awakenings that we haven't even seen in our generation to the, this degree. Is there hope for America? We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Are you tired of watching a show like mine and saying to yourself, I could never be like the guest that Sid Roth has on? Well, you're Meshuggah, you're nuts. We're getting into the most extreme move, most radical move of God's spirit. And the best prepping you can do for the end times is not storing food and water and shotguns. It's storing up the Spirit of God and moving in the power of God. That's why I'm so excited about your book, because it's a, the greatest prep I know. Mm. Yes, the Chinese have a saying. They say, "May you live in interesting times. And boy, are we living in interesting times today. There's great darkness and gross darkness upon the land. And the Lord said in Isaiah, that at that time the glory of God would shine bright upon God's people. So this book, The Real Spirit of Revival, is a preparation book. It's a book to prepare people for the coming revival. It's a book to prepare people to live in personal revival. It's a book that will prepare the unprepared. You know, almost a century ago, Smith Wigglesworth spoke a prophecy at the Angeles Temple in, in Los Angeles, California. And he talked about how in the last days, 50% of all professing Christians would not be ready for the coming of the Lord. That's a lot of people. And this book will help you to prepare for his coming, to prepare for the harvest that is yet to come and the glory of the Lord. And so I want you to get this book. Um, it's, uh, it was born in my heart out of a season where God began to deal with me about speaking and writing on what he called lost themes or truths in the body of Christ that have been discarded, that have been um, understated, truths in the, in the, in the, in the Bible on, on the coming of the Lord. You know, we don't hear that preached too much anymore, and yet in the apostolic letters of the New Testament, every writer wrote about the coming of the Lord. He told me that there was a diabolical silence on the subject of holiness. We don't talk about holiness anymore because it's such a misunderstood subject. People relate holiness to, to rules and restrictions and do's and don'ts and, and laws, but holiness is, is a beautiful 
beautiful thing. It's the character of God. It's the nature of God. So the Lord began to deal with me about writing more and speaking more on holiness. Uh, the judgment seat of Christ, themes like heaven and, and hell. Today we have preachers that don't even preach on hell anymore. There are preachers that are writing books that hell doesn't even exist. Uh, there's, there's so much of a, of a diabolical silence on, on these themes. We're not, we're not emphasizing these things. You know, Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. Yes, if you study the Gospels, he mentioned hell 14 more times than he did heaven. Why? Because it is hell that puts the fear of God into people and plants the fear of God in people. Jesus said, uh, don't fear those that can kill the body, but fear those that, that can kill the body and the soul and throw it into hell. Fear him, he said. So it's the fear of God that will plant a, a fear. It's the fear of God that will, uh, from, from hearing these, these, these lost themes and hearing things on, on hell is what's going to plant the fear of the Lord in a person. So the book deals a lot with these lost Lost themes, these truths that have just been understated in the body of Christ. They need to be said. They need to be spoken loud and clear in this day that we're living in. And, and the book deals with that. Your, your own personal. I believe the last move of God really is going to be a move where God is going to ignite his people with a passion for God. He's going to ignite his people with a fire of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to prepare them for a, a, a work. God wants to do a work of holiness in people's hearts and that's what's really going to prepare people for the crisis that's ahead of us and in the last days and the end times and the harvest I like to say it like this no holiness equals no harvest there's got to be a work done in people's hearts to prepare them for the harvest and so the book deals with these 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 themes these truths and toward the end the last three chapters or so I deal with past revivals and revivals that have gone on back in the 17th and 18th century and the great awakenings that we've we've had in America and how God wants to do that again and so this book will light you on fire help you prepare for what is coming and do a real work of God's holiness in your heart tell me how did you find these ancient prophecies from men and women who were so revered they're almost like they were buried for for some for us uh 50, 60, 100 years, but they, they look like these prophecies are for today. How did you even find them? Well, thank God for history books, and, and people, have, people have recorded a lot of these prophecies. Me, m, books have been written about such men as Smith Wigglesworth and, and John G. Lake and, and, and these men of old. And, you know, more recently, uh, uh, there's men like Oral Roberts and Kenneth E. Hagan and Lester Sumrall, some of these great pioneers of the faith that have gone on to be with the Lord. And there's, there's many things that they spoke about the day that we're living in that are just coming to pass even right now. So just a little digging, you know, studying some, some, some of the history on revivals. And Finney, who was one of the great revivalists of, of, of our recent times, also I have many of his books and writings. And, and he was a holiness preacher. And that is one of the truths that really needs to be restored in the church today is, is holiness. And I find that in revivals past, that theme of holiness was, was central. They believed in a personal holiness and they believed in the outflow of that holiness and the outflow to reach out. And, and, uh, and the power of the Holy Spirit was something they emphasized in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And these things have got to be emphasized and they've got to be preached. Uh, tell me about our exclusive 3D set on House on Fire. Yes, we have a 3D, uh, a 3CD set on, really it's, if I could uh, title it myself, it would be on, on living full and burning bright in this hour that we're living in. You know, the New Testament plan of God is for every believer to live full of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with with the spirit or in other words don't be drunk with wine but be drunk on the spirit of God and so we we can live because we're living in the New Testament dispensation God's plan is for every one of us to live full of the spirit how by speaking in other tongues by praying in the spirit by speaking or singing to ourselves in 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 psalms and hymns and spiritual songs this is another lost art in the church today people don't even know when you when you ask them do you speak or sing in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs 
Most people don't even know what you're talking about. And so this CD set, I'm talking to the, the normal, ordinary, everyday housewife or working man. That you can live a life that is full of the Spirit. And you can live a life on fire for God. Even, even, at, even at your workplace, wherever you go, 24-7, you can live on fire. And so that's what the CD series is about. Just, just how, to, how to cultivate that fire and how to live in that fire and how to live full of God's Spirit and presence. Now, now most people are not going to churches that are really on fire for God. Uh, is it possible for them to get your book and your three CD set and a love, the, the card of nuggets from the past of, of great men and women of God? Can they be on fire? Can their families be on fire if they're in a lukewarm church? Absolutely. You know, God no longer dwells in a temples made with human hands. He doesn't live in the church building. He lives in you and I. We are his temple and we are to be filled with God's glory, God's praise, God's power. Everywhere we go, we carry God with us. He's in us. He, he's, he's, he rests upon us. So every one of us can tap into that life that's already, that's already inside of us. Every one of us can live that spirit filled life. It's up to you. You can, Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that's within you. See, there, there can be something in you, and yet it can be stagnant. It can be dormant. Paul says to stir that up. And as we stir up that gift and we, we pray in the Holy Spirit, then, then, then the infilling begins. You begin to fine-tune your spirit to these psalms and songs and prophetic utterances that can be spoken not just from earth to heaven. We know a lot about God speaking from, from, uh, from, I mean, from heaven to earth. There's prophecy that's from heaven into earth, but there's prophecy that's also from, from earth to heaven. And we are filled with the Spirit of God. We can be filled daily by speaking these divine utterances in, uh, unto the Lord. And it's for every one of us. Okay. The last greatest revival in history is upon us. Do you want to be on the shelf or do you want to be used by God? I believe that this resource is going to make the difference. I want your house to be on fire for Jesus. <laughs> Learn how to access the manifest presence and power of God in your family with the House on Fire package by Bert Farias with his book, The Real Spirit of Revival, and three audio CD series, House on Fire, for investment of 39 U.S. dollars. To order, call 1-800-447-447. 2697. That's 1 800 447 2697. Or go to our website at sidroth.org. That's sidroth.org. The book and three CD series, House on Fire, offer number 9355 for an investment of 39 US dollars. Be sure to ask for offer 9355. Once again, that's offer 9355. We now return to It's Supernatural. Okay, I set you up. Is there hope for America? Very important question. I believe there is. We're at a critical point right now in this nation, but there's been too many deep wells of revival planted in this nation throughout history. We've sent out too, much mis mis too many missionaries, too many gospels. There's righteous seed in this nation. And uh, God's purposes are never vindictive. He's not looking to punish America. His purposes are always redemptive. So there is hope for this nation because there is a godly remnant, a strong godly remnant that, that is still living in this nation. Now, we have had uh, revivals in several areas of our country. Nothing compared to the, the, those zones that, where people would just bow down on the ground and on their knees and repent over, over sin when no one was even preaching. Uh, but you saw the closest we've had. You were out at Brownsville. What did you see? The week that I went down there and the services that I was in, that I was in were, were electric. I mean, people were lining up outside from early morning to early evening to get into the services. And when I walked in there, I could feel the 
electricity in there. And during the service, that, those particular services, I remember they miked little children in the back room, seven, eight, nine years old, moaning and groaning and travailing. They had mics on them in, in, in the spirit, having, having this, this, this consciousness of God and eternity and the lostness of the world. And, and I remember one of those services they, they put in on the platform, they put these large trash bins. And, and the, the evangelist was talking about articles of affection that we all have in our lives. And he was calling for repentance. It was a strong call for repentance that night. And he had people come up, people that had addictions, people that were bound by these, what he called these different articles of, of, of affection. He had, you know, anything from drug paraphernalia to cigarettes to pornographic magazine. I mean, people came up with all this trash and threw it in the in the, in these trash bins and they had a rejoicing party people repenting people crying over their sins and then being set free from all these addictions that's that was the week i went there was a tremendous altar calls hundreds there was cry, tears of great great crying weeping and then tears followed by tears of great joy and rejoicing you told me during the break that you have an unction to pray for miracles and fire. Would you do that right now? Yes. Father, I thank you right now for the Spirit of God. There is no distance in the Spirit. And right now, wherever people are watching in cities and nations here and across the world, I thank you now for your holy fire. I thank you, Father, for a revelation of Jesus Christ flooding across these nations right now and, and dreams and visions being given to many that would reveal Christ to them and cause an explosion of holy fire that would ignite within them even now. And Father, those, those that are sick, those that are diseased, tormented, chronic sicknesses, terminal sicknesses. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I release now that power, an anointing of power to go into the, these people's bodies. All of, I see people in hospital beds right now that are watching this. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up from your bed. Get up from your deathbed. Be free from your cancer and your, and your terminal diseases. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive that healing power and that healing anointing right there in your room room where you are through a transfer, a transfer of God's Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name. Be healed now. Cripples be healed. Those that can't even hear and maybe watching television have problems with your ears in the name of Jesus. Ears be open. Deaf and dumb spirits come out in the name of Jesus. Those that are having problems with their eyes, even blindness in Jesus name. Eyes be open. Blindness go. Demons leave in Jesus name. Be free right now of every death damnable disease that is impoverishing your life right now by the power of God to the glory of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, <laughs> joints are being healed right now. I tell you that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Yes. You say, I'm that one. You repent of your sin. Do I have to tell you? No, you know what it is. You tell Jesus you're sorry. Believe the blood of Jesus gives you the power and washes away your sin so you can walk the way you've always wanted to. Make Jesus your Lord. Yes. And watch the angels in heaven start rejoicing just for you. You know I'm talking to yes. you. Now do business yes. with God. Yes. Did you know that God wants to revive you? He wants to impart to you His supernatural power. Did you know that you don't have to put up with unanswered prayers, the enemy's assaults, and the constant struggle with failure and lack? Get ready to burn with God's holy fire and make a difference in the world around you. Call now and get Bert Farius House on Fire package, which includes his powerful book, The Real Spirit of Revival, and his three-part audio CD teaching, House on Fire, and his Revival Nuggets power card. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9355. Through Bert's powerful book, The Real Spirit of Revival, you will learn five revelatory keys to remain spirit-filled and walk in 
the supernatural every day of your life. Discover the lost themes of the Bible, which gave the early church the supernatural power to share the gospel, heal the sick, and walk with divine favor. Learn of the ancient prophecies that were buried for 50, 60, 100 years. Prophecies which are ready to happen now. Learn how to bring angels of protection and provision into your life. Receive an impartation of true revival that will bring the atmosphere of God's presence into your daily life. Begin to walk moment by moment with supernatural peace, boldness, faith, and divine purpose in your life like never before. Receive an unshakable spirit that withstands every trial and receive supernatural power to overcome every obstacle. This book will help you to prepare for His coming, to prepare for the harvest that is yet to come, and the glory of the Lord. You will also receive Bert Farias anointed three-part audio CD teaching House on Fire. Through this power-packed teaching series, you will learn how to walk in God's revival fire 24-7. Keys to help your children have a personal relationship with the Lord. Practical steps on how you can bring the supernatural of God back into your life and the lives of those around you. On these CDs, Bert will lead you in powerful prayers to experience the fullness of God. I'm talking to the, the normal, ordinary, everyday housewife or working man that you can live a life that is full of the Spirit and you can live a life on fire for God. Even at your workplace, wherever you go, 24-7, you can live on fire. Also included is his Revival Nuggets Power Card, which includes powerful fire starter quotes from those pioneers who ushered in the greatest revivals of our time. We're getting into the most extreme move, most radical move of God's Spirit. And the best prepping you can do for the end times is not storing food and water and shotguns. It's storing up the Spirit of God and moving in the power of God. The last greatest revival in history is upon us. Do you want to be on the shelf or do you want to be used by God? I believe that this resource is going to make the difference. I want your house to be on fire for Jesus. Don't miss out on getting Bert Farias' House on Fire package, which includes his powerful book, The Real Spirit of Revival, and his three-part audio CD teaching, House on Fire, and his Revival Nuggets Power Card. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9355. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9355 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. How would you like to make right decisions every time? My guest says it's simple. Would you like to learn? Yes. <laughs> Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.